picked up four of them because I didn't think my order went through and I ordered two more. Uh, to go along with that I picked up a um, a number 12 R8 collet. I don't have it in the uh, box here with me but well I do too. Here's a number 12. I actually got two of these. A number 12 R8 collet to go with those. Amazing. Plastic. So thin, transparent, but yet so strong. So, those should do some good machining for me. Like I say, it's, it's a 12, so if I need to do a half inch slot, I can go through and then go back and catch the other side and sneak up on the line and uh, cut it exactly half inch. So that'll work out good. I don't know if you could see those. I have to check the uh, collet for run out as it is a Chinesium collet. I got both the collet and the um, cutting tools from Banggood. I'm trying to have all the tooling I need, or let me let me put it this way, a great deal of the tooling I need when I finally get everything set up and running in the shop so that I can take off on projects. My previous video I showed you a piece of steel I got to make the uh, locking handle for the tailstock for my lathe. Well this is going to go on top of that. It's a lot like the handle that uh, Tom Tom Knopp has on his that he put on his uh, Enco lathe at Hilltop Machining. Not exactly, but quite a bit like it. And I liked his design, so that's what I'm going with. That'll be the handle, the locking handle for my for my uh, tailstock. I got that off, that handle off of eBay for I want to say ten dollars. Got a nice little drill gauge protractor. It's a general, but it's sweet, there's no damage to it, no rust. Got it at a good price off of eBay. I've got a lot of old drills from the body shop that I had told you about that will need to be sharpened and that will come in handy. Picked up a Acme thread gauge. I'm afraid I'm going to have to turn a new uh, lead screw for my lathe. There's quite a bit of, of a backlash in the uh, cross slide. Now, Supposedly that model Ingo has an adjustable um, I've got a Taiwanese Enco lathe and supposedly it has an adjustable 
um, lead screw nut to take the backlash out, but there's a, a, an excessive amount of backlash in that lead screw. And I don't know if that nut can take that much out or if I'm going to have to turn a new lead screw and lead screw nut. Going outside? Mm -hmm. Okay. Another thing I'm going to need from my milling machine I picked up is a fairly nice set of roughing end mills. These are cobalt steel, they're not carbide but they should do a good job roughing that's a one inch with a three-quarter inch shank and then they go down to the smallest one is a uh, half inch with a half inch shank with an inch and a quarter cutting area. So I could be, I should be able to rough out what I need and then use my carbide end mills to finish up. Get a decent finish. Now I see no need for anyone to mention to my wife all these things I'm showing you today. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more. Picked up a uh, Morse. Machinist practical guide. That kind of okay. I picked up a Morse machinist practical guide. Morse, like Morse taper, and that should come in handy around the shop. Another item I got off the uh, used machinist tools website is a nice set of Sterrett pin punches. Complete set of pin punches, and it had an extra punch of three eighths. It came with two of the red packs and one extra three eighths punch. They're not new, they're used, but they're lightly used. The ends are very slightly deformed. I can shape those up with the grinder or the belt sander and those will be perfect for use. Like I say, the Used Machinist uh, Tools Facebook page is a good source of uh, machining. You got to make sure things are lined up and accurate. This is a dial gauge, and I can't remember where I got this one from, but it's a one inch throw, and it's in thousands.
Now I've got another one in tenths, so. But just for lining up in the lathe and getting close, this will do it for you. This is all we ever had when I studied machining back in 67, pardon me, 68, 69, and 69 and 70. We didn't have anything that was less than a thousandth. All of our tolerances back then was plus or minus three thousandths. I like it that machining has improved to where we can get things more accurate than they were. The thing you have to always remember is that we are, we are human beings. We cannot achieve perfection. Here's a test indicator. It will go down to half a thousandth. I'll be using that to indicate in my milling machine table and stuff. Things that I need really accurate. Holes for boring, things like that. These are not big name brand items. Of course, I, I'm retired and on a fixed budget, and I, I can't afford the, the big high dollar items. But every now and then, I'm able to pick up a, like I say, those pin punches and stuff off the, uh, the used machinist tools Facebook page. Another reminder that if you want to get on that page, contact James Green, Eagle Dust Off 37, and uh, he can put you on there. He is one of the administrators. The taper in the tailstock of my lathe is a little rough, so I picked up a couple of number three Morse taper. Uh, hand reamers and that'll help me uh, clean that up should work fine if I need to make anything then and need an inside Morse taper I can do it for my lathe another Chinese product is there anything we make in the United States anymore I think even Sterrett moved their production overseas picked up a little It's an MGEHR slotting tool, 16, a number 16 metric. It came with tips. So I can use that for cut off or for undercutting, for threading, whatever I need it for. I'll have to get some different tips for that though. I don't like putting a square undercut for threading. I like putting a radius undercut in there. But it seems to be a nice little tool. That's another uh, bang good item. Now bang good if you're watching. You can send me anything you want to. And I'll do a review on it. Thank you. That is a shameless plug for free stuff from Banggood. <laughs> of course, it came with an Allen wrench. I'm feeling much better 
today that I've started on my medication and uh, haven't had the extreme fatigue that I normally have. I went down this morning to help my brother. We're cleaning up my mom's house, getting ready to sell it. My, my mom and dad both have passed away and we're we're getting that ready for sale, so felt pretty good this morning. Getting a house ready for sale after someone has passed, it's kind of like calling your friends up when you move. They never seem to be at home when you call them.